All right, is everyone ready to talk about open data and uh, learn a little more about DCAN, an open source, open data distribution of Drupal? I think if y'all are prepared, let's take it away. All right, so DCAN is a Drupal-based, as mentioned, still on Drupal 7, but soon to be D8, uh, community-driven, free, and open source, open data platform, which offers a full suite of cataloging, publishing, and visualization features. So with DCAN, uh, organizations and individuals have freedom to publish and open up data to the public and get that data out to the people. There are many, many sites built on DCAN throughout the world. In fact, there are so many uh, because it is open source and it's free for anybody in the world, anywhere in the world, to start their own uh, out-of-the-box DCAN website. There, uh, there's so many that we can't even keep track. Uh, all seven continents have folks using DCAN, but some of the sites that we at Civic Actions uh, provide support for uh, include healthdata.gov for the Department of Health and Human Services, and that pulls data from all over the web. Uh, the CDC, the NIH, Centers for Medicaid and Medicare Services, all of these different agencies, all of their data is harvested onto healthdata.gov, which so far has over 4,000 different data sets full of all sorts of data resources. Uh, so that's one notable DCAN site. There's also the state we, of California's we were, open data portal. We were really excited this spring to see that uh, uh, there's a data catalog in Antarctica, so that got us to every continent. <laughs> yes, uh, there is a marine fisheries uh, open data portal about Antarctica. So, yeah, I was the one who dug that up, and I'm, I'm proud of finding that one. And uh, I hope all the scientists and penguins are enjoying Drupal. <laughs> So yeah, the state of California's open data portal, that's another big DCAN site. Uh, that's another one that we're really proud to have supported from the very beginning. Um, so much crucial data about energy usage, about water, about uh, where different creatures live. Uh, you can even see maps of where specific species live in the state of California. Just all sorts of data is stored within these libraries. I, I was really excited to, uh, I'm kind of a, a duck enthusiast. And uh, the state of California is publishing a data set on the, um, uh, the whereabouts of the har harlequin duck, which, if you know about ducks, is one of the most interesting and beautiful ducks out there. So we're hoping to, to publish uh, information about, about harlequin ducks. Yeah, so They're very pretty. Yes, beautiful ducks. So that is just one of many, many uses of the data stored within these DCAN open data libraries. So yeah, we've got, so far, we've got DCAN adoption in 30 countries, 35 cities, and by five US states and federal agencies. And as we continue to uh, get those uh, lovely government agency contracts, uh, we hope that this list continues to grow. Uh, so if you guys remember Project Open Data, that was a project under the Obama administration to standardize uh, open metadata schemas uh, and geospatial data schemas. Um, Project Open Data identified uh, DCAN as a ready-to-use tool that will help agencies jumpstart their open efforts, uh, and it's a real implementable solution developed to significantly reduce the barrier to implementing open data at your agency. Uh, what does this mean? This means that if you've got an agency, you've got tons of data, it's locked away in old dusty file cabinets or stored on floppy disks, God forbid, uh, or buried somewhere within your network, and you just want to build a library and get it out there to the people, DCAN will help you do that quickly and easily. You can even uh, spin up an out-of-the-box DCAN site on Pantheon in only about 25 minutes, and uh, the longest part of that isn't even setting up the site, it's just waiting for Pantheon to build the site. And so we have two, uh, healthdata.gov and uh, the U.S. Veterans Administration are using DCAN to, um, uh, to um, publish in the data.json format, and um, so those are two of our federal level uh, DCAN adopters. Yes, so uh, when I tell people that I build websites for government agencies, I always say it's the good ones and we're doing good. <laughs> and yeah, we can back that up. All right, so let's talk about what makes open data open. Uh, I know a lot of you are familiar with the term open data, but there's always a handful of people who uh, would like to learn more about the exact definition of open data. Well, open data is about availability and accessibility. So open data should be truly open and not have silly barriers that keep people from accessing it. It should be published in a convenient, modifiable format that can be linked elsewhere and shared with one another 
provided in a standard structured format so that it's machine readable and usable by many different platforms and applications. Uh, open data should also be guaranteed to be available and consistent over time. For example, we always know that the census is going to be providing data provided that uh, nothing crazy happens within the government to get rid of the census. Uh, but I very much love the census since my background is in geographic data, so nothing what about that. But yes, availability and consistency over time, absolutely crucial. And open data should be traceable back to where it originates. That way when the data is passed around, reused, modified, etc., you always know where it came from originally. So you can reach out to that agency or that representative and say, hey, I had a few questions about your data. Let's talk. Uh, open data should also be reusable. It should be free to access, use, and share. If you have to pay to get past a firewall to access that data, that data is not open. It is closed off. Uh, open data should also be easily redistrib redistributed. Redis you know what? That it's easily redistributed. Yes. And open data should be open to the general public. And Again, just to keep driving from these points, the general public must be able to freely use, reuse, and redistribute the data. So it's all about sharing. Sharing is caring, and that's at the heart of open data and keeping open data open. The do's and don'ts of data distribution. The do's and don'ts of data distribution. Exactly. Thank you, Aaron. So who is DCAN for? Uh, Publishers, data publishers, DCAN is for city, state, or local government agencies that would like to share info about education, the environment, healthcare, transportation, whatever you can put into data and share with the people uh, that the publishers uh, have DCAN for that purpose. There's also nonprofits, NGOs, and universities who use DCAN to open up their data. Uh, some of those nonprofits range from um, NCUSCR, which is the National Council on US China Relations, lots of interesting data there. Uh, I also found an anti-mafia website run in Sicily that's using DCAN to track uh, mafia corruption data in Italy. Um, so uh, hopefully the mafia will uh, never come to the DCAN team directly about that, but it's good that that organization is using the site for that purpose. Uh, finally, DCAN is also for the users themselves, the end users, citizens, researchers, journalists, students, anyone who wishes to access public data and make good use of it. Uh, and just to jump in with a little side tangent, speaking of students looking up open data, uh, I was in grad school about 10 years ago because I am secretly older than I look, and my background is in geography and GIS, so I would spend a lot of late nights just pulling all-nighters in the geography lab of Hunter College. Uh, it would just be me in the computer lab and snacks, and I would be searching all of these different sites for geospatial data for different projects I was working on. And at that time, um, the federal, uh, state, and city governments uh, whose data I was looking up for these projects, uh, for example, it would be like census data or uh, land use data from the state of Alabama or state of Missouri or something, me sitting in New York City trying to find all of this. Uh, it was a nightmare. This was before open data portals really became a widely used thing amongst agencies. And I would have to dig through all of these terrible FTP websites and just pray that there was some local university that had some of this data in their repository. Um, so I do remember when all of this was closed off and it makes me really happy that uh, academics these days can access open data freely and yeah, have uh, all of the accessibility that I had mentioned before. So when you're on a DCAN website, and I'll jump over uh, to tabs to be able to show this to you guys, uh, DCAN organizes all of this data into three different content types built right in. Um, so groups, that uses Drupal's organic groups. Um, these represent the data publishers or agencies. So that would be the Department of uh, Transportation or the Health Department. Um, you can have different groups within the website. And uh, groups contain data sets. Uh, data sets, you could think of uh, like a manila folder containing data resources. Uh, data sets, uh, they categorize the data and label it with the appropriate metadata. So for example, that manila folder, that's, you know, that's not the data itself, but it's the container. And all of that important info about it is written on the outside. And you know, those labels help when you're searching through thousands of folders in a giant file cabinet. So that is the purpose of data sets. And then resources, those are the actual data resources. Uh, those can be files stored on the site, they can be remotely linked files or imported APIs. So uh, resources are uh, all the little pieces of data that you want to find. 
And I'll show you how this looks on the average DCAN open data portal. This is the this is the DCAN demo site uh, available at demo.getdcan.com. And to also show uh, what a couple of other uh, DCAN open data sites look like. I had referenced these earlier in the presentation, uh, healthdata.gov and data.ca.gov for the state of California. You can see that they all take uh, same basic layout because you know, DCAN is uh, pretty uh, plain and simple when putting the site together. Um, but uh, going back to the subject of sorting things into groups uh, and data sets, uh, when I'm on the state of California's uh, open data portal and I click on groups, I'm able to see that all of the data sets that are hosted on the site are sorted by the Department of Aging, the Department of Fish and Wildlife. Oh my god, 989 data sets. Uh, the California Department of Fish and Wildlife is crushing it. One of the fun things is that every time we come back here, the numbers are different, things have been updated, um, especially California is very active right now. Yeah, California, uh, they they are incredible, and but it makes us really happy. Let's find those ducks. Yeah, let's find those ducks. All right, so I clicked into the group, California Department of Fish and Wildlife. So it's got four members of the group who are responsible for maintaining uh, and moderating all the data that comes in and out. We've got tons of different tags for all the data sets and resources there. We've also got formats, so you can search for the exact one in case you are in the geography lab late at night looking for specific GIS resources or other such formats. And uh, yeah, I can search for the exact item I'm looking for, which is uh, the Harlequin duck. All right, we've got four different data sets about ducks, and here's our beautiful Harlequin, Harlequin duck. And we're in the data set right now. You've got a good uh, description of the data set the scale at which uh, everything is measured, uh, all of that important info. Um, you can also see that the resources, uh, there are five resources stored within the data set, ranging from uh, ArcGIS Open Data Sets to Esri REST APIs, uh, shout out again to Geospatial Data, a GeoJSON, a, a CSV file, and a shape file. So you have all sorts of uh, rich formats to be able to share this duck data. And then, you know, if you want to access the metadata itself, uh, it's all stored down here at the bottom of the, uh, the data set page underneath tags, very important tags such as histrionicus and birds. <laughs> um, uh, that's interesting, histrionicus. I am going to have to research the etymology of how that is linked to ducks uh, after this presentation. But yes, you see all of the important metadata for the data set. So that's the publisher, the modified date, the release date, a uh, contact email if I want to ask uh, the Department of GIS about the duck data, uh, public access level, and more. So here we can see that the duck data has not ch has not changed, uh, and it was published in June. So um, they can al also uh, publish the periodicity when you would expect the next update to come. Um, so that's some of what the the metadata gives you. Yeah, and that metadata is super handy, especially you know if you're working for NIH. Let's say there's some big terrible flu epidemic, and the period periodicity is given as monthly. You can know that every month there's going to be fresh data for that topic. And you can also access the data, uh, the metadata in JSON RDF formats. But let's click into one of these and check out a data resource within DCAN. Here's a GeoJSON that shows the range of all these ducks. And the ducks are hanging out in Northern California, so they say hella a lot. They're all around the Bay Area. Uh, and also uh, past Sacramento around Carson City, Nevada, and uh, Mono Lake and Yosemite and all of those lovely places. So these ducks are. Uh, Hanging out in really nice parts of California and having a great time. <laughs> They're high high rent ducks. Yes, the, those ducks are paying three thousand dollars to live in a closet, and it's not even a pond; it's a puddle on the inside. But it, it's worth it for to be close to the tech industry. Yes. <laughs> so that's what you see on the average DCAN Open Data Portal. And one thing I didn't go to was the actual data sets page. Uh, just to show 1,513 data sets on the California Open Data Portal so far. And this site launched only about like a year and a half ago, right? So, man, we've collected a whole lot of data in a short amount of time. And it's really cool just to watch these libraries get bigger and bigger. It's almost like building a real life library that's like very small, small town, little village library, and then just watching it get bigger and bigger. And then all of a sudden, it's the New York Public Library, and it's enormous. So one of the challenges that California has had is that they're trying to publish very large data sets. Um, 
And one of the things that we'll talk about a little bit later is that there's a component called a data store in, in DCAN. And so we've been working directly with the state of California to enhance the capability to, um, to publish these large data sets in a um, machine readable uh, and accessible way. So that's one of the kind of fun things that we get to do with our clients is see where their kind of pain points are and then not only have solutions for them, but we contribute that back to DCAN so that uh, um, all the rest of the clients that we have and all the adopters get that, um, those enhancements. Yeah, it's a really beautiful thing, the way that it works. Um, you know, if California is having issues with data harvesting from the different agency websites, because we uh, use uh, the data.json that's built into every out-of-the-box uh, DCAN site to be able to uh, port data to and from outside sites, if the state of California is having an issue with that and saying, hey, we can't harvest this data, we're having trouble with it, we will put fixes into DCAN that improve it for um, not only other support clients, but also uh, DCAN sites around the world all of the other uh, DCAN sites in the wild that I mentioned before. So yeah. it's good that all of this goes back into the project. Oh no, I minimized it. There we go. All right, that is the proper tab. And that is why we do not keep uh, too many tabs open at once. Moving onward, uh, I had already explained this, but just a little graphic that I made using some emojis uh, just to show groups, data sets, and resources the way that they are organized within DCAN. So it's all just one big file cabinet, but so much better than a file cabinet for finding exactly what you need. And less dusty. Much less dusty and loud and noisy. Um, and also, uh, just one more thing before I click ahead of this, you can see that there are four different types of data resources stored within these data sets. So CSV, PDF, Shapefile, uh, Excel, uh, again, data sets can hold all sorts of resources and they can all be stored within your DCAN Open Data Portal. So we touched upon metadata for a bit. Uh, for those without a data science background or, or who are unfamiliar with this term, uh, I'll just define it real quick. Metadata is the who, what, when, where, and why of data. It is all of that important information about the data to know what's going on with it. Uh, DCAN is automatically built to comply with a wide number of national and international metadata standards, including DCAT and Project Open Data. Uh, and custom metadata specifications can be added. So we have all sorts of custom metadata spe specifications. Uh, for example, for Marine Scotland, they're uh, using really interesting uh, they, they just have all sorts of data about all of the uh, sea creatures in Scotland, except for the Loch Ness Monster. That is the one that they have not put on their DCAN open data portal yet. But all of the other creatures besides that one, they have very specific geospatial uh, metadata specifications for sharing all of that data within the UK. So whether it's uh, United States-based uh, federal uh, metadata standards or international ones, you can customize your DCAN open data portal to fit those schemas. And DCAN has the capability to create, uh, well, you'll touch on this, complex workflows so that uh, data that doesn't need, that data that they don't want to be published isn't published. Hence, the Loch Ness Monster data set might not be public yet. One day, one day they've got to make that data public. Uh, but it's true, we do have workflows in DCAN to be able to moderate what is and isn't published on the site, and I will get to that uh, well, in a little bit. In the meantime, uh, there are automatic data previews available within DCAN. Uh, here are just three little screenshots, just a little, a little triptych of uh, what, what it looks like when you are previewing a uh, DCAN resource. Uh, you can enable uh, automatic previews in three different formats. Um, when you're clicking into a data resource itself, you can preview it as a grid, uh, as a graph, or as a map. So this one, crime data for the 10 most populous cities in the US. I'm clicking into this data set. We've got descriptions here. Uh, let's check out these property crime stats. So when I'm checking out the data resource itself and going back to my days in the geography lab, it's so nice that you could just preview data automatically without having to sit and download the Excel file and wait for it to download and then open it up and then oh, it's on your hard drive and it's not even the data you were looking for so then you gotta delete it and download some other data. This is why I had so many all-nighters. DCAN data previews 
prevent whoever's in school right now looking up all this data from having to pull those all-nighters. Um, so yeah, just you're able to preview things as uh, grids, graphs, and maps. You're able to search the data to get to the exact record you're looking for. And this is just a very simple data set with 10 records, but um, because of DCAN's data store capabilities, we can store, uh, parse and store CSV files uh, thousands on thousands on thousands of rows. So what you're saying is we do it for the kids? We do it for the kids, yes. Um, let's see, I'm gonna automatically make a graph preview. Property crime by city, sweet. So yeah, without having to download this, without having to open it in Excel or Tableau or figure out the whole chart thing myself, uh, automatically I was just able to choose what I want in Access 1 and what I want in Access 2. And I can even add additional crimes. So Philadelphia, I'm from Philadelphia, gets a bad rap. But that, look at that, That's the property crime is, is pretty good nationally. Yeah, honestly, like, What's going on over here in Houston and San Antonio? I mean, I can explain New York because I'm from there. We're all crazy. But uh, Houston and San Antonio are definitely blowing Philly out of the water. It's the heat. <laughs> it is the heat. You're absolutely right. So yeah, and there's also map previews. I love that you can just click on map and for any CSV or GeoJSON or other tabular data that contains latitude and longitude columns stored all the way over here on the right hand side. Um, if you just click on map, uh, whether it's got those lat long points or GeoJSON polygons, uh, because uh, GeoJSON uh, data could be stored within CSVs to be able to outline the exact polygons like uh, where those ducks live. Uh, boom, you just click on map, you've got the preview. And here's all of my data points. And this, this really is so awesome when you've got hundreds or thousands of data points. Um, and I can just click on each of the little points and automatically everything that's stored within that CSV just because it had those Latin long columns, I can get all that info right away just by clicking on each point. Here's Philly, holding it down. So yeah, data previews are pretty awesome. Those are different from the visualization entity which is built into DCAN, I'll get to that in a little bit, but ready for previews. All right, I'm getting to visualizations now because we're, of this next we're, slide. We're there. Yeah, we're here. we made it. There's a built-in visualizations entity in out-of-the-box DCAN built on the D3 JavaScript library um, that will allow you to take resources stored within DCAN, uh, whether or not they're hosted on your site or on outside site, as long as that data is within your open data library. You can automatically build bar line pie charts or scatter plots, stack charts, um, those Latin long point maps. Uh, all of this can be created very easily without code, with custom colors, custom labels, uh, as a content type within DCAN. So I'll show you what this looks like on the DCAN demo site. We've created a data dashboard for uh, all of those scary crime stats. So this is one I created, and again, I used no code. This is all just out of the box DCAN. I created this data dashboard that has all sorts of scary crime data within interactive charts. Uh, of the multi-bar and pie varieties, breaking down uh, all of the info. And you know, it's a lot more, it's a lot easier to understand this sort of data when you're looking at it visually rather than just seeing the numbers. Um, and what's pretty cool about the automatic visualizations, you can mouse over things, get the exact rates that you're looking at, change things from grouped to stacked, which again shows that San Antonio is clearly having uh, some of the worst problems right now. Don't know what's going on there. Uh, I can also narrow down the data to only show what I want to specifically look at. So let's get rid of everything except for motor vehicle theft. Dallas, that, they've got some motor vehicle looking theft. great, looking great, Philly. <laughs> you, you did it, you didn't steal as many cars. I'm actually buying a car this weekend, so this... <laughs> He's actually buying it, folks, he's not <laughs> stealing it. Let's see this arson rate too, this one's interesting. Yeah, and especially because if you have it enabled regularly, it's too small to see and then you get rid of everything else and boom. So yeah, this is something that we, uh, the visualization entity that we built into um, DCAN um, as a, uh, a custom part of DCAN. Um, the rest of the page is generated by um, all the uh, Drupal goodness panels, um, uh, the in-page panels editor, uh, so it's a it's a match of a, it's kind of a, a mix of best the best of both worlds. Some of the um, kind of open data specific tools that um, that 
that we need as well as the, the kind of baked in stuff that you get with, with Drupal. And pretty colors. <laughs> you can also embed external visualizations into your DCAN site. Uh, here is the front page of the uh, Louisville, Kentucky open data portal. Shout out to them for just their tech team is uh, absolutely on top of everything uh, open data wise, and they're very active in our DCAN Slack channel as community members. We have a slight open data crush on there. Yeah, we love them. Their team. <laughs> they're pretty great. Yeah. It's absolutely true. Um, and they have a CardoDB map embedded on their front page, an interactive map. So uh, while the maps that you can create within DCAN are you know, pretty simple because we're not Tableau, we're in the business of building open data libraries, um, still CardoDB, uh, ArcGIS shapefiles, all sorts of external visualization services. If you've got an embed link and you want to embed that interactive map onto your front page or any other page in the site or data story, data dashboard, it's very simple to do so. I had also touched upon DCAN data stories. Uh, data stories are a content type built into DCAN that allow you to create posts using charts, maps, and more to present key points. Uh, and data stories can be posted sequentially uh, in the vein of a blog. So if you have a city open data portal uh, and there's a successful project, like a campaign's build more bike lanes, and every quarter there's updates on where new bike lanes have been built, um, you'd be able to uh, post charts and maps with each story as the data develops and be able to show uh, what's going on. Keep your citizens updated. How much, uh, how, how much effort is that into building a story? Um. Really not much effort at all, honestly. Like, Let's go to this tree planting uh, data story. So I think, I mean, it really depends on, on the data and the story that you're trying to tell. So the, um, the, the crime map, uh, the, that we were just looking at had the the data was pretty ready to um, to to be viewed in that format. So it was really a question of like clicking around and creating the um, graphs and charts. Um, so that that in itself is actually pretty um, pretty quick. Like you, here's the Stephanie just logged in as an admin, and you can see that. Um, so all of these widgets you can kind of you can create through the UI. Um, <coughs> And that in itself, and we could maybe show. Do you want to like click on one of the like add a um, click on one of the plus signs, and you can kind of see the choices that you get. Sure, and um, uh, just to show what this looks like when I'm not in editing mode, it's just a nice little story about tree planting in Madison, and uh, how there's lots of nice trees, and Erin created these charts and maps about the trees. Well, uh, I guess I was more so asking about you know identifying the appropriate data points to build the story, like more from a, I guess, analysis level. Like, what, what, how do you connect those dots? Is there like a specific approach you have? Hmm. You know what I mean? Like, there's a whole kind of, um, you know, data science community so and, and okay, perspective. So yeah, and, and so, yeah, it just really depends on the story that you're trying to tell. Um, you know, we, we get asked this by clients. We do create some of these data stories for our clients, and um, it just it, it depends on the story that you're trying to tell and the um, like what state your data is in. The tools, as we're looking at them, um, you know, like once you've got that set up and know your narrative, mm -hmm. the the tools make that as as easy as, as possible. But uh, I would also recommend that you look up Tidy Data. There is a whole Tidy Data manifesto about how to make your data uh, nice, nice and clean and machine readable uh, so that it can be easily interpreted by uh, chart uh, and map software and other uh, data visualization software because that'll really help you with building visualizations and be able to put together data stories. Um, and Tidy Data also includes uh, really important principles like uh, you only have one observation per column and like keep your different uh, data sets, uh, keep your different uh, ob observations in different tables. So for example, uh, if you've got tables of information about a city uh, and you've got uh, population numbers and income numbers, uh, it's going to break most chart creation software outside of like Excel if you're just having uh, population counts uh, and income within uh, different columns in the same chart. Um, it's good to keep those separated into two different tables uh, so that machine, uh, when it is read by machine reading software, it can just put everything out uh, all nice. Yes, uh, that I would normally use more eloquent terms, but I hope you get the gist of what I'm saying. 
It's kind of like an, 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 a news story could take be an investigative in expose that takes a, a year to to create, or it could be you know reporting on a on an event that takes an hour. It really depends on like the state of your data and what you're trying to tell. Yeah, but once you've um, you know got the data together, it's pretty easy to just start filling in the blanks and put in some images, put in some text content. <coughs> and, and to sneeze, thank you. So when I click on the plus sign, you're one of these uh, boxes within the DCAN data story and the layouts uh, of DCAN data stories and data dashboards allow you to choose where these boxes will go. I can choose uh, what kind of content I want to add, whether it is a visualization or a video, um, a text, table, a slideshow. Um, it's all pretty easy to add. No code needed. So we could add an existing visualization if we. So he, we have, an, uh, and if you spin up DCAN for yourself, you'll get all this content to kind of play around with. So um, now we've embedded a uh, one of the um, visualizations that we've created that makes no sense <laughs> here, um, but um, the. Yeah, we're we were working to make the tools as easy as as possible. Um. Yeah, pretty easy and user friendly, and uh, you can also drag things around pretty easily. So I don't want this pie chart at this point in the story. I want it to be in this column above this image. Uh, when I click save, it'll automatically uh, scooch it into place. But no, it's quite simple or, to be able to put these all where could, I want them to go. Or we could click cancel and not. Um, screw up the, the Deacon demo site. Yes, I can throw this panel into the trash and also click cancel to make double sure that it doesn't keep anything to screw up the main site. Yes, yeah, so that's Deacon Data Stories. So, awesome feature to have. Uh, Deacon Data Dashboards, I did touch on, upon those a little bit. You can just think of those two content types as siblings. They're super, super similar. They are essentially one and the same. Uh, data stories are just more sequential, and data story data dashboards tend to be more of the one-stop shop uh, for publishing data with a common theme. Uh, however, they're pretty much one and the same, and for the sake of time, I am going to move on. We've got even more content types built into DCAN, such as pages, used for an about page, uh, frequently asked questions, whatever you want to use a page for. Uh, visualizations, that's a content type in and of itself. Data stories, data dashboards, you want content types, we've got content types. <laughs> there are even more data publishing features such as metadata compliance and customization tools, I had mentioned that before, tags, topics, and taxonomies for easy browsing and organization. And for those unfamiliar with the term taxonomy, uh, if you know about uh, the way that animals are categorized into kingdom, chordata, genus, uh, and you know, cat is Felis domesticus. All of that, the way the animals are labeled and grouped, that that is one big taxonomy. So a taxonomy is just a vocabulary for organizing things. And when you've got tons of data and tons of tags related to it, taxonomies are super helpful for sorting all of those out into uh, schemas that make sense. Uh, we've got roles and permissions for moderating user workflows. For example, you can giveth and taketh away permissions from certain user types. Uh, you could even create brand new roles uh, if you have, let's say, uh, folks in your organization who should have access to uploading things, but maybe not have access to everything all at once. Um, yeah, those are all customizable, and there's plenty of good roles and permissions built in. I'll talk about those in a bit. We've also got data harvesting for expanding the listing of your catalog, like how healthdata.gov harvests all of that data from various health agency websites, and APIs to allow your data to be used elsewhere, such as within a mobile app. APIs are pretty great. I love APIs. Yeah, who, who doesn't love APIs? Uh, there's also a data uploader built in for resources from your hard drive or for, from a remote source and just upload those and pull them directly into the site. Uh, chart and map previews as mentioned. Uh, the DCAN data store parses and stores large data sets uh, so that they can be accessed in the most efficient manner. There's also the Drupal integrated content management system for blogs, videos, slideshows, and more, and multilingual translation. Uh, for example, Georgia Schools, their site for figuring out which schools uh, have which grades and which performance indicators. Uh, it's uh, got translation available to automatically switch the React dashboards within the site that show all of this uh, interesting school grade data 
Uh, you can switch from English to Spanish just like that. And yeah, within DCAN, um, I'm just going to get through the rest of this. Uh, there are roles and permissions and workflows to make content moderation uh, easier and more manageable. Uh, there are three different roles. Site manager, it's the, uh, the big kahuna who is able to oversee, add, edit, delete content in all different groups, uh, no matter who put it up there on the site originally. So site manager, that is a role with serious security implications, best for you know the big bosses or supervisors in an organization. Uh, editor, that's sort of the middle role. They can add and edit data within a specific group, such as Department of Transportation. Uh, they can be the moderator of that group and the master of their domain. And then content creator, that is the lowest down role. That's a pretty good role for, let's say you've got you know, an intern who's still in college and you've got all of this uh, this data from your agency that you've dug up that you personally don't have time to upload to the site, so you've got this wonderful little intern here to do it for you. Uh, but because they were just hired, you don't think they should be able to edit or delete anybody else's content and that they should just stay in their own lane, content creator is a good role for that sort of person. And then finally, the DCAN workbench module that is optional, but you can turn it on pretty easily within DCAN. Uh, it'll allow content to move from draft to needs review to published. So if something isn't ready to be up on the live site, uh, there could be a, an editor or a site manager serving as a moderator to be able to say, hey, that content is not ready yet. Let's uh, just keep it unpublished now, send it back to drafts. Uh, you can edit it, put it back in needs review, and uh, see if it gets accepted later on. Take it away, Aaron. Sure. So all of those uh, features that we're talking about, the, the workflow, um, they're all built. Uh, DCAN is built as a Drupal distribution. So we're um, building on top of the uh, Drupal core itself and a lot of the key uh, contributed modules. Um, so yeah, it's a single code base that um, a, a Drupal developer will be able to come in uh, and um, uh, extend, modify, uh, and add to in a way that uses Drupal best practice and that um, is uh, sustainable um, for the uh, uh, to to uh, be able to have uh, security updates, to be able to um, have a sane uh, publishing workflow. One of the key, so um, this is a this is a really key feature um, architecturally that distinguishes DCAN from a lot of the open other open data catalogs is that uh, we have all these open data features built into um, uh, the Drupal content management platform and kind of more importantly built into like the Drupal community. We can leverage the the thousands and thousands of uh, Drupal contributed modules. So one thing that we find is that. Um, Client, uh, folks that are adopting DCAN have, you know, added modules, turned things on that uh, we never would have, uh, might not have thought of ourselves, and um, so we're leveraging uh, all of that um, creativity. Uh, mm -hmm. Folks typically um, either host uh, on their own um, in their own warehouse uh, or a data warehouse. Um, one of the things that one of the reasons that we've uh, been so successful internationally, we think, is that um, building on Drupal uh, is a uh, um, pretty, by now, um, tried and tested uh, technology. The LAMP stack is very widely adopted, um, and especially internationally, f and, and um, within the US as well, a lot of folks have mandates to publish within their own um, within their own, using their own servers and their own um, uh, internal uh, IT infrastructure. Uh, there's also, uh, you can also spin up DCAN pretty eas easily uh, on um, Aqua or Pantheon or any cloud um, hosted service. If you really want to check out your DCAN for yourself, go to uh, DCAN Docs and there's some instructions for um, spinning up DCAN on Pantheon um, or Aquia. One of the really nice things about Pantheon is that uh, uh, updates that we push um, to DCAN will automatically be um, available through the um, Pantheon tools. So um, that's a that's a really great feature, especially if you're limited in terms of your tech budget. 
and you can just kind of go spin it up and um, play it around, play around with it. Um, if you have any trouble with DCAN, if you um, want to know more about DCAN, we're very involved in curating the DCAN community. Um, you can find us on GitHub. That's where we're developing uh, DCAN and the, the DCAN is ecosystem. We have a Slack channel. Um, we're interacting with the folks on Slack on the daily, uh, and um, we uh, we love to hear from people. If you have questions or uh, ideas or, or you're stuck, um, or if you have new features or um, or places that you think we should go, um, that's uh, that's where you can find us. And we're also at conferences. Um, we're everywhere. We're everywhere. <laughs> we're in seven continents. Yes, awesome. um, so yeah, I think that's um, we're gonna we're gonna leave it at that. If we have any if you have any questions, um, let us know. Uh, wait, Aaron, we still have some slides about We still service. have a couple slides. Um, uh, we we uh, do release on a quarterly basis. Um, uh, Anytime there's a Drupal core uh, update, um, so you are supported if you're using DCAN, even if you're not a client of ours. Um, we're, our goal is to uh, release on a quarterly basis. We um, security updates we'll, we'll push right away. Um, so the next Drupal Geddon or even Drupal not so Geddon uh, will have a bad Drupal day. If you're if you're having a bad Drupal day as a sysadmin. You can um, go to get a new release of DCAN that has uh, the security patch and update. So yeah, and you can always learn more at getdcan.org slash roadmap, where our roadmap and all the developments are public and available to the people. So I think we've hit our, our time box. Um, yeah. So let's, let's just... <laughs> yeah, uh, we don't have to go through the whole roadmap. I think... Uh, and just say what's, what's coming up on the roadmap. We've got some good stuff uh, cooking up in the kitchen. Uh, yeah, so data quality is, um, is a huge kind of uh, issue across the open data community. Um, it's a huge burden when uh, when data is published, but it's um, it's it doesn't follow a, a schema correctly. So if you ha if you're building an app and you have um, a column that's supposed to be date fields and there's uh, other content in there. If you're expecting integers and it's there's there's strings, that that can destroy your workflow and it's is incredibly expensive for the open data ecosystem. So we're um, providing some new uh, data quality tools, uh, analytics tools, um, support for data dictionaries, uh, extensible metadata and data collections. Uh, and we're doing some improvements to the data store that's going to make it more. Expensive. Scalable. We're also working on the Drupal 8 uh, uh, version of DCAN. We're really excited. Uh, we're sprinting downstairs right now. Folks are sprinting. They're working hard. They're doing the code. Drupal They're 8. Doing the updates. We're doing it. <laughs> um, so we're really excited about that. Uh, we're doing some architectural things with DCAN that I'd be happy to talk about if you're interested. That. Um, we think are really going to improve uh, some of the pain points and some of the things that um, we're uh, really excited to, to kind of improve. Um, so JSON schemas, document storage, headless or progressive enhancements. If that means anything to you, talk to me because it's very exciting. <laughs> and fun, and we'll we'll leave you with our mission statement. Is uh, we just we just uh, as a group had a retreat yesterday, so this is fresh. You guys are the first ones to see our updated mission statement. Yeah, it's uh, very special. We connect people with information they need to improve their lives and communities. We do this by empowering governments and civil society organizations to publish high quality open data using open source collaboratively built tools and best practices. If you see us not living up to this, you you, you got to let us know. Yeah, hit us up on Slack. <laughs> send us some mean S gifts. S send us a DM like... I don't know if yes. you're if you're living up. It to goes down state. in the DM. Um, so yeah, and we're civic actions. We're uh, we're all civic actions that we're the DCAN maintainer. And uh, yeah, that's it for us. Um, any questions? Great, thanks. Yeah. Thanks for coming, everyone. He's laughing because he got my "It goes down the in the DM" reference.